Hello, my name is Igor Zobritsky and in this introductory tutorial I will describe several issues connected with open design and manufacturing, the role of Fab Labs, uh, what are the open design and prototyping tools and what are the open software and hardware projects. You are part of a first group of people who will be doing the open design and manufacturing curriculum. So this is particularly fun for you as you can really see how it is being done and how we also develop this course. Uh, so I'm Igor Zobrycki, I'm from FabLab Łódź and uh, from Politechnika Łódzka. Mm, normally I do robots and robotics but I'm also very engaged with the open uh, design uh, society. So let's first start with uh, some introduction to, to Fab Labs and uh, Fab Lab Łódź. Uh, so, first maybe I will start with the explanation of what FabLab is uh, in general. So, FabLab has three parts. Uh, this, uh, this part is the community. All of these guys that are on the picture are part of a, of a FabLab group in Wuj. But in general, FabLabs have many, many members throughout the whole world. So, not only in Poland, but also in other countries. Uh, in, in Great Britain, in uh, Italy, France, uh, as well as uh, in in USA, where this uh, whole group originated. Uh, we in FabLab Wuj started in 2013, and uh, the project started with uh, a different project called uh, Cohabitat. This was uh, more about ecological living and ecological society, but because there were many people uh, of different interests, so people who wanted to do art, people who wanted to do, uh, to do science or technology. Uh, the idea was to turn part of the cohabitat to FabLab. Uh, so um, our FabLab in, in which was one of the first um, as an independent organization uh, with which its own place, members, it was at that time not connected to any university, it was just a group of people. Uh, but even at that time we highly marketed ourselves to find new members uh, and to try to, to figure out an appropriate role for us. Uh, this is maybe a big uh, word, but we were a pioneer in social innovation of fabrication laboratory. This means that uh, we tried to figure out how you can connect different pieces together to create, to enable, I would say, normal people uh, to be able to fabricate, to, to be able to cre create something new and uh, in, in kind of laboratory setting. Laboratory meaning that you could experiment, not in the meaning of, you know, a science laboratory. Uh, so, uh, especially uh, Grzesiek and many members of FabLab uh, tried to uh, help start uh, other fab labs in Poland uh, and other maker spaces. The difference between fab labs and maker spaces is not really important. It's mainly about the words, but the places such as fab labs uh, in Poland uh, are highly connected. Uh, we share uh, good practices, we travel uh, to, to different uh, places to, to explain what we are about and uh, we tend to help each other. Mm. So even from the beginning, uh, many of the members of FabLab which uh, tried to make some good business. And this was uh, by sharing our tools with businesses as well as just creating projects together. These projects were very varied. There were not only projects connected to technology but also to art. Um, I started um, by helping Honorata Wukasik, she's a Polish artist, uh, in, in which uh, she wanted to make a, a device that could draw on walls. Uh, and we did this device and uh, she, she made many exhibitions with it. Uh, but also many people uh, helped local theatres, even uh, which opera, um, as well as completely you know, typical technical stuff such as making some some tooling for companies or just creating, you know, 3D printing stuff. Uh, currently, 
uh, we are also very involved in creating um, cooperation with uh, with technical schools or pretty much general any academias. This is your school, as well as Polytechnica in Łódź, as well as uh, Łódź Academy of Arts, uh, Medical University, mm, and this helps us to create uh, something you know newer and bigger. Uh, sometimes really these different schools don't have a place to collaborate in a, I would say, relaxed fashion. Uh, so um, we can bring them together, uh, so in our space or in their space, but you know, with our cooperation, then they, they can create something in, more interesting. I particularly, because I'm a part of, uh, of which University of Technology, created uh, a project called Robotherapia. which is an open design project about uh, helping uh, mentally disabled children, therapies of mentally disabled children. Mm. So on the, on the website you can find details, but the point there was to uh, bring different people together, uh, such as designers, uh, computer scientists, uh, roboticists, so they could create uh, tools that could help uh, therapies of mentally disabled children. Um, what is very, very important is that FabLab is people. Uh, so this is a group of makers, inventors and educators. Mm, maker is a person that just makes using all tools available. So not only traditional tools, but also tools such as 3D printers, uh, scanners, uh, CNC machines and more. But the whole community is something that I'm particularly proud of and I'm particularly interested in. So you have these all people with, from different backgrounds, sometimes really even conflicting backgrounds, that can work together uh, to create something new, something, you know, modern. So these are not traditional designs, but these are modern designs uh, that have electronics, that have, uh, you know, artificial intelligence as well as uh, traditional tools. Um, and the community is something that is really important. Mm. What is also uh, important is um, that we as FabLab have, re uh, have responsibility and we um, take it quite seriously. So the idea that um, as a person you are not alone but you are a part of some society and um, FabLab is a place that supports society. Um, so, uh, as I told you, the Fab Lab started from Cohabitat, uh, at, at least in Łódź. Um, and the Cohabitat was about a project of creating some ecological villages and ecological, um, uh, you know, parts of, um, of cities. Um, but uh, in Fab Lab in general, this can be even more. This can be um, to create a whole environment that it is friendly and particularly to do, for, uh, to do this for education. Uh, so during different uh, workshops and courses, we educated over 1,000 people uh, in 3D printing, Arduino electronics, uh, but uh, moreover in crafts. So this doesn't necessarily need to be only technical. Uh, this can be also some mm, just, just uh, things that interest uh, the local society. Uh, so uh, we got uh, project uh, with a company, ABB, uh, to educate uh, people from uh, technical universities and local high schools. Mm. And this project was called Academia Prototypowania i Fabrikacji, uh, which was about uh, teaching people how they can create their own ideas uh, using some other prototyping tools and fabrication tools. Uh, so during uh, during workshops, they could uh, they could or you will also be able to uh, use uh, do it yourself PCB and soldering, um, some metal work, some programming, uh, as well as CAD, so computer aided design uh, and manufacturing, and also crafts and art. Uh, in FabLab which uh, we are able to use different machines. And this is also a part of the Fab Lab. All of Fab Labs as a fabrication laboratories, they have tools that you can experiment on to create your own designs. 
and uh, these are uh, CNC machines. Uh, this, in our case, uh, as, as which is a textile city, we have a sewing machines, uh, as well as a lot of electronics and open hardware. Uh, in in many cases, these um, these uh, tools available for people from FabLab are varied. Uh, I found a website from MIT. Uh, they have uh, bits and pieces, so bits and atoms um, laboratory, uh, such as a, I would say a very very advanced fab lab where they have not only 3d printers and cnc machines but they also have uh, you know tools like scanning electron microscope uh, or some you know a lot of laser cutters and so on but the tools are very important and all of fab labs have at least some basic tools uh, i'm trying to find some list of basic tools um, but typically these are 3D printers, CNC machines, uh, laser cutters, uh, vinyl cutters, mm, and a lot of uh, hand tools or soldering tools. Uh, so Fab Labs don't no, don't, do not only design uh, devices, but they can also manufacture uh, devices. So this can be scaled up at least to, I would say, uh, uh, middle range, so we can create some some devices in in hundreds. Uh, so some of the members of FabLab create some architectural pieces, or they create some mm, some designs for homes that they sell, uh, and they create these devices uh, in FabLab. Uh, but also uh, some mechanic parts were created in FabLabs. Mm, we have also some experimental designs. Uh, such as here is a walking machine uh, that was maybe not scaled up so there were not multiple of these pieces but this one piece is really advanced and so FabLab as uh, a way to support community usually organizes a lot of events mm. so these events uh, take place not only in a FabLab space but in general industrial spaces, sometimes at the, uh, with the help of university, uh, sometimes FabLab supports university or the other way around. So the, the, bigger, uh, the biggest one is uh, Maker's Night, uh, which had already seven editions, uh, but these are also robotic hackathons mm, and participating or creating conferences and expert meetings. Uh, at the uh, description of the video, uh, I will give you links to uh, videos describing particular events. Please watch them. Uh, they are fun uh, to watch and uh, hopefully you will understand it better what kind of events they are. Because they are usually not a typical, you know, boring, uh, just people saying stuff. But they usually are very fun and artistic events uh, where people can really enjoy themselves. Uh, while creating technologies or watching people create technologies. Mm. So, uh, Nods with Furtsov, so Maker's Night had seven editions. At the beginning it was quite a small, um, but uh, recent ones were quite big with many different participants. Uh, but we also had a hackathon in, in which uh, people created uh, robots and you will also be participating in such a hackathon. I will explain the details and some prototyping methods uh, in the next uh, webinar. Uh, but there were also some convents uh, where people met and discussed stuff uh, also. Mm, so please take a look on our materials. Uh, if you want to contact the boss of, uh, of FabLapuj, you can contact Grzegorz directly. Mm, and let's proceed with the rest of presentation. Oh yeah. So he, here, are, here are the tools of the Fab Labs. So maybe let's bring a bit of detail to this. Uh, so hopefully uh, you know some of these tools, but if not, please Google them. I will not go into detail uh, during this presentation, uh, but I want to give you some idea of what Fab Lab can bring to you. And moreover, how, how do we tend to educate people in this? or how people tend to get educated. Uh, so normally, uh, these are digital fabrication tools, power tools, 
uh, electronic tools, hand tools, and electronic equipment. Digital fabrication is something that it is the most, uh, you know, famous. Uh, fab labs are really famous uh, for 3D printers, you know, different scale 3D printers. We have resin 3D, 3D printers, FDM uh, 3D printers, mm, but um, but th this is what uh, fab labs are famous from. But usually people um, do not only use only 3D printers. This is because maybe you don't realize this, but to make even small piece on 3D printers, it, it takes a really long time. So if you want to make uh, something of a size of uh, like a cup, this will take something like 14 hours. Uh, so uh, 3D printing is very nice if you want to make a design um, that you are already sure about. But if you are not sure about um, the design, it is better to use something that uh, is faster, such as lasers uh, or, uh, or even doing this by hand. So in, in FabLab, which we have many power tools, and these are drills, uh, drills uh, you know, chop saws, uh, routers, mm, lathes. In our case, uh, we have also a lathe. Uh, and this is really something that people use. Uh, in, in FabLab, which I think more often than the digital fabrication tools, because they are just faster. Uh, Electronic tools is something that you are already experimenting with. Uh, this is, you know, all of these diodes and transistors that you are learning about. Uh, but to use, um, to create electronics, you have to have electronic tools. So we have soldering stations, we have some oscilloscope, power supplies, um, just tools to, to be able to create electronics. Mm. Hand tools, this is kind of obvious, but uh, at least if you live in dormitory, I don't think that you have all of the hand tools available. We have many, many more than this list and to really be able to create something by hand or to, for example, 3D print something and then screw screws to it. And obviously, electronics equipment. Uh, so modern uh, electronics is not creating something from scratch, but usually using some developer tools such as Arduinos or Raspberry Pis and adding to it. So we have available multiple Arduinos or Raspberry Pis. Okay, so how do you actually teach this? Uh, so uh, Fab Labs, as an idea, started uh, in MIT, so Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, with a course called How to Make Almost Anything. Uh, so this course is running even now. I really uh, suggest that you visit the, the website of this course. Um, so this is this is this how to make uh, almost anything, uh, and uh, to click on people, and to see what the current uh, people that are participating in this course are learning. This is really fun to see. This is, for example, a website uh, made by Danielle uh, Aspis, uh, in which um, she uh, explained different uh, learning parts that she participated. Uh, so, in this course, you start by uh, figuring out some sketching, uh, some project that you want to be involved in. Uh, then you learn how, how can you uh, use lasers and uh, CNC machines to cut. You create your own electronics. Uh, you learn how to 3D print and scan. You learn how to design electronics, uh, how you can machine uh, parts. How can you make something called embedded programming? In our case, this will be called uh, Internet of Things on the second hackathon. Uh, molding and casting, which is uh, to be able to create a mold, so some, pat some pattern that you then can use multiple times. This is, this is a commonly used manufacturing process. How can you make an output device, so something that produces, you know, sound, motion, and so on. This is the robots that you create. How you can create a whole machine design using CAD tools, some input devices, so some sensors, interface and application programming, so how can you make a website or a different interface for your device, networking, so how can you put this on, on internet, composites, which is, which is using modern, um, modern uh, glues and te textiles to come together with the composite materials. Which are, which are light and, you know, very hard. And finally, to create your projects. 
this is how uh, how hackathons uh, started or how the whole maker movement pretty much kick started is that people were really interested in this project and many people not only from MIT wanted to participate in this kind of events and where they wanted to learn experiment with modern tools um, in in a fashion that it is you know not so stressful so so by, by doing uh, uh, fun projects mm -hmm. and this is what we uh, provide in fab labs you will participate uh, in learning par parts of this uh, we we structured it a bit different so you have these multiple hackathons in which you will participate but the whole idea is very very similar that you uh, start by thinking about your project and then you find ways and you learn ways how you can make this project. Uh, of course not everybody can mm, use all of these parts <coughs> but what is important is that there are, there are these multiple tools. Okay so mm, yeah, this is another person who is participating right now in this so she, she uh, she did not uh, finish this course yet, but you can see that uh, she's learning these multiple parts and for each of these parts they have to create a website in which they explain what they are doing. So, so, so here is her uh, using a vacuum chamber to, to create a, a mold. So yeah, you can go to uh, fablab.org fablablogs.org website and read about uh, fablab Wood. Mm. The, the website has uh, many different parts uh, but let's uh, go now to the ODM and so uh, what you are doing is a part uh, of a open design and manufacturing project this project has many different members from many countries uh, altogether there are six countries involved this is UK, Italy, Spain, China, Poland and Netherlands. Not all of the countries have students involved, but uh, particularly UK, Italy, Spain and Poland has students involved that uh, are working on similar type of projects, uh, although not all of them are structured in the same way because we're experimenting with different structures. Uh, in Poland we have hackathons, but for example in the UK uh, they are focusing on helping local society uh, in, in, in two parts, but these are not hackathons, as well as Italy Sp in and Spain has, uh, has different projects. Uh, so what is open design and manufacturing? The, the website is about connecting universities, makers and enterprises. Uh, but around open design and manufacturing. So, you know, open design and manufacturing is about open design and manufacturing. So I have to uh, say something more about this. And so uh, open design and manufacturing is about creating an impact on a local community by supporting makers and by supporting businesses. So this is what we did in FabLab Wuj, is that um, we do not only support you know people who want to create stuff but we also support people who make it, who want to make a business this is very important because we live in a capitalistic society so people need to make money to survive and only when you can sell the stuff that you create you can survive uh, so we need to find a ways that open design is sustainable uh, open design, so for example, creating uh, some different different tools. Uh, open design is something that it is very big, but to give you some some examples, uh, we have projects that are about uh, creating electronics, about creating robots, uh, drones, uh, some electronic pieces, some whole companies selling electronics. But this is also open design means, for example, open prosthetics, which create so you know people lose hands uh, or or legs, and uh, they can 3D print their own uh, their own new limbs. But the question is, who will pay for that? And in, uh, in open design and manufacturing, we are figuring out ways that you can sustain such a businesses. 
So, you know, some makers create a hand for a disabled person, um, but some other people figure out the ways that you can market this, that you can sell this and support this in the long term. And this is what open design and manufacturing is about. So here on the website we say a knowledge alliance, meaning that because you are a part of open design and manufacturing, you have access to many, many people uh, who are currently creating these communities of practices. So the, the people who create societies in different countries. Uh, and what is important is how you can create the social good so some social change, some ecological change uh, to tackle this all, all of the current problems with businesses and with fab labs and with academia. So please visit the website and learn something more. Uh, open design and manufacturing practitioners are not only in Europe but also in China. Uh, China, as you know, is a very big manufacturing hub uh, but they are not so open right now and Europe is right now very open but not so focused on manufacturing. Uh, so here we are trying to figure out how you can connect all of these pieces together to create something that it is an open, sustainable and responsible for the current uh, societies. So as I said there are many different hardware projects that were successfully created by makers and then turned into something that it is uh, sustainable, so some businesses. Big ones are of course Arduinos, so you are using a board called uh, ESP8266, but you are programming this using Arduino. Arduino is an Italian company that was started as an open hardware project, so everybody can create an Arduino board uh, by themselves, but the, but the company supports people and people pay for this support. So you can buy an Arduino board, you can buy books by, by the Arduino uh, company, or you can, you know, uh, support them by just paying the foundation. But uh, this is a way that, you know, the company has over 10 years uh, and it still is a valid business. Um, but it is also something that contributes to the society. Uh, so uh, I'm, I guess you can imagine that there are many different ways that Arduinos can be used in a ways in which you cannot make a business. So for example, you can put Arduino inside uh, of, of some special device for a disabled person. So we, in a robotherapy project, uh, put uh, Arduinos inside of uh, inside of Maybe, maybe I will show you some examples of the projects uh, where, for example, this is a special device uh, for autistic children in which they can experiment with di different textures or shapes and there is a computer inside, this is actually an Arduino uh, and we are very happy that we could, you know, figure out how to use it without really paying very much because, as you know, hospitals or uh, places uh, like that don't have really a lot of money, uh, but some people do, and we are happy that together we can create something new and even better. Uh, so many many drones uh, fly on something called Arduino Pilot, and this is, for example, a project also Arduino based, uh, which uh, enables people to create or design something new using uh, using open hardware boards. So you can either buy this board, so you can create your own, and this is what the open uh, hardware is about. Mm. So maybe I did not define open source of or open hardware. Uh, I am more comfortable telling that there is a free and open uh, source and hardware. So it's not only because openness means that, uh, for example, when you use Raspberry Pi. Uh, you know what software it is running. You are sure well, that there is nothing harmful, harmful, for example. So, uh, for example, when you use Facebook, you don't really know uh, what is going on with your data. 
but in the case of Raspberry Pi, everything there is open source or can be open source, and because of that, you can check whether everything is okay. But this is, you know, very big from the ethics perspective that you are an owner uh, uh, of of something that you understand how it works, or you at least are able to understand how it works. So you are sure that it is not doing something harmful. But there is also the the libre part or the uh, free part, which means that uh, the software uh, has also a nice licenses, and that, that you can use this uh, in a different project. So, for example, you can take a Raspberry Pi uh, and, for example, put it in your car, in your you know self-driving car, or put in your uh, you know design refrigerator, and you can actually sell this. Mm, so you can put these different parts, uh, you know, like a puzzles, to create something new. So you, you usually should be hearing that it is something is free and open source. Uh, BeagleBoard is an example because actually Raspberry Pi is not fully free and open source. They have a special chip there that it is not really accessible by, by normal people. Uh, and this is kind of frustrating because you are not 100% sure that everything is okay. But BeagleBoard is a super good example of something that is uh, open, uh, open design and manufacturing because this is a board where you can create everything by yourself. So in our laboratory, on our uh, robots, we are just using this one board. So this one piece, we don't use the whole board because uh, we are creating a special robot. And we were able to, to do this because the, everything is accessible uh, in BeagleBoard. I, I tell that this is a good example of open design and manufacturing because actually the BeagleBoard company is very supported by a super big company called Texas Instruments that it is interested in um, creating uh, open hardware projects. And uh, I, I would like to thank you them for, for that. So uh, I told you on that uh, open hardware uh, is one thing, but the second thing is this manufacturing. So how, how can you really make a business from being open? Uh, this is kind of confusing, at least in some cultures. Polish culture is one of such cultures that you don't really want to share everything because you know somebody can steal it and make a business instead of you. Uh, but a very good example of being open and still making money from something is a project, uh, a Linux project. Uh, so uh, there is a version of Linux called Red Hat, and the Red Hat was recently bought by an IBM for $34 billion. So imagine that somebody paid $34 billion for an open source company. So if you want to run a, a Red Hat, you can just download it from a website so you can go to a, like a Fedora, uh, Fedora is one of the versions of Red Hat. You can go to a Fedora website and you can just get it for free and use it for whatever means you want. So why would somebody pay $34 billion uh, for, for such a company? So they, they paid because it makes sense, because the whole world right now, so pretty much all of the computers, uh, all of the servers that are running are run on Linux. And Linux is a very big thing. Actually, the company uh, is is uh, based in Czech Republic, so not so far from Poland. At least a big part of this company is uh, is really new Poland. Uh, but it, what is important is that you can really make money from being open, uh, and and really this gives you some thought that it it is a st it can be a sustainable way to create businesses to being open. But what is important is that the company or the whole idea started from being open, so it started from creating something that everybody can use, and because they were open, the, the whole community started around this, so many people helped create Red Hat for free, um, or, you know, became the developers. Many people used Red Hat or Linux systems because it is open and you can check whether everything is okay, that nobody is spying on you, that you know that it is ethical, um, and because of that, the company grew, and now it was bought for for 35 billion dollars. It is one of the biggest 
uh, sales of, a, of this kind of a company. And so, finally, I want to give you some examples of how uh, you can start participating in the open uh, design pro pro processes. The easiest way to start is by just reading a w website with such an open uh, hardware project, su such as Instructables. Uh, so just go to instructables.co and there are many examples of open uh, hardware projects that you can do in your own homes uh, or, or, or just, you know, some of these are just uh, descriptions but some are really full-blown open hardware projects. And the other website is especially that when you have a 3D printer you can use this website with, which is called Thingiverse. Thingiverse is where people put 3D designs for other people to use. Um, and, and these two websites are very good to understand how the open design processes are run. So when I start a project, when I want to you know, create something new, first thing I check is what is already done. So for example, when I want to create uh, some, imagine that for example I wanted to create some, some new a uh, new robot, right? So, when I want to, for example, learn about some tooling, I would create, I would learn about uh, CNC class or electronics class. Then I would probably just look at some different robots. So there are many, many examples of different robots. I would probably have to be more details, but imagine that I want to create a robotic arm, right? Uh, so. I could I could click on this, I could check of this project and learn from this project and maybe instead of creating something totally from scratch I would collaborate with this person to create something better. So this is how you usually create an open hardware project. You learn from different people, you collaborate with different people and you make something better. So instead of creating just something new you create something better by understanding and learning and collaborating with people who already created uh, projects uh, before you. The other website that it is good to know is that uh, there is a Hackaday. Uh, Hackaday, yes, so Hackaday is a website uh, about descriptions of different projects, but people on this website can create their own projects. Mm. So th there are trending projects, but there are many different projects. And this is really good to, to start. When you want to create a new project, just learn about what is already there. Uh, and maybe collaborate or even copy these people at the beginning. Uh, so, so you can usually understand what parts they use, uh, what procedures they, new, they use to create something new and, and funnier. This is a very different mindset then maybe what you learned at the university, that you have to be original and that you cannot copy. Actually, when, so when uh, hardware is open, you can copy. Of course, you have to say that, you know, this was not only created by you, but it was created by some company or some persons. But luckily for you, usually you can use that and you can make something better. Mm. So with that, uh, you have your first uh, challenge. Uh, and the first challenge is just googling around pretty much and describing stuff but you have two questions for you and that you have to answer using a presentation uh, the first one is very connected to to the final project proposal in your case is what kind of open source or open hardware project do you want to make so please explain this you can look how people explain this on, a, on this website um, in your case, you will be creating projects connected to intelligent cities or smart cities. You can create a robot for smart city, you can create an Internet of Things device for smart city, but your first challenge is that just figure out, just sketch, so create some simple drawings or some simple presentation of something that you are willing to create and what is open source and open hardware. And the second, also googling around, is please describe, so also create a, a simple, by, by presentation I mean like one, two pages of a presentation, um, but something, you know,
concrete. So this has to be put on Google Drive or some Dropbox that we have access to. And the second uh, challenge is to describe some interesting open hardware project that either you want to participate or you want to use in your own project. So you can go to this website, the Hackaday, you can go to Instructables, but please find something that inspires you or multiple projects that inspire you. Maybe contact the authors of this project or just describe the project in a detail that we can understand what inspired you and why you find it interesting. You probably will find it interesting because it helps you develop your, develop your own project. Okay, so with that, uh, see you next week where I will be creating another webinar, this time probably interactive, so you will be able to participate, but I'm not sure, uh, in which we will be describing some prototyping devices. So, bye.